many of us are serious about getting a good night's sleep. On average, adults still need seven to eight hours of good sleep. What's interesting is how few adults get seven to eight hours of good sleep. Teenagers particularly are chronically sleep deprived. There's very little doubt about that. If you were to sample a typical high school classroom, I'll bet you there would be a 25 to 30% incidence of some attributable sleep disorder. We all know that getting regular exercise and eating nutritious food is vital to our health. But sleep researchers say getting a good night's sleep should also be added to that list. It's not just a luxury, it's a biological necessity. In the modern age, your chances of being fat, diabetic and having cardiovascular disease, and additionally having depression and mood and psychiatric problems, goes up if you sleep poorly. And as I say, sleep is not just sleep, it's your sleep-wake cycle. If you've got the 24-hour clock wrong, as you get older, you will have many more physical health and mental health problems. The part of your brain that tries to make you sleep and wake at the most beneficial times is the suprachiasmatic nucleus, otherwise known as the body's master clock. It receives information from your eyes about incoming light. So when it gets dark at night, it directs your pineal gland to secrete melatonin, a hormone that makes you sleepy. Then in the morning, when the sunlight hits your eyes, the signal is given to stop releasing melatonin making you more alert. Disrupt those light signals and your sleep-wake cycle can fall apart. Now, I've had a patient recently who was um, completely blind from 18 months of age because he had a cancer in his eye. A very sad case, but his body clocks all over the place. He'd be up at 2 a.m. and wanting to play and he'd be asleep at 2 p.m. because he has lost the light and dark differentiation. Most of us can override these daily light signals simply by doing things that keep us awake at night. But the impact of that on our master clock means we're risking more than just tiredness. Every cell in the body has its own clock and they're all running to different signals. So it's a totally chaotic set of clocks. So really important is the master clock. It's got to be right to tell all the rest, the liver, the basically the gut, the heart, the rest of the musculoskeletal system to get their act together. If you haven't got the brain bit right, all those other bits of the body will head off down their own track. For teenagers, with that early wake up for school, getting enough sleep at night is a biological challenge. Teenagers actually need more sleep than adults, about nine hours a night. And they also have something called a sleep phase delay. The major difference between animals and uh, humans it's really this massive frontal area. If you measure melatonin in teenagers, it, it is delayed, and it's also probably smaller in amount that's secreted. So for a teenager, 10 p.m. to them, it's like 8 p.m. So there's no teenager in the world that would want to go to bed at 8 p.m. and expect to fall asleep. I'd still be awake at 2, and I'd look at the clock, and then it would be 3, and then I'd fall asleep, and then my alarm would go off. 16-year-old Amelia Hartley sought treatment yeah. after two years of only getting four or five hours sleep most nights. Oh, I was so grumpy. I was irritable. Every tiny thing annoyed me and getting at everyone about everything. Grades dropped dramatically. They're not going to come to the doctor to say, I have a sleep phase delay problem. They're going to come because their teachers are complaining, they're not performing. They are having emotional or behavioural problems. They might be labelled with attention deficit disorder. Why? Because they can't pay attention, because they're fidgeting and they're moving and they're not doing well at school, because they're sleep deprived. What appears to be happening increasingly with teenagers now is taking that normal delay and going far too far with it. So through use of computers and technology and Facebook and iPhones and everything else known to man, teenagers staying up later and later and later. So, for older teenagers, young adults, and then for the rest of us, what we're really saying is optimally the go to sleep time is around 11 o'clock. Now, for younger teenagers, it's still going to be around, you know, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. For older teenagers, maybe slightly later. 
we're certainly not talking after midnight. And, you know, for most of us, we're not really talking after 11.30. Once you've started to do that, you've really started to put the phase, or the onset of sleep, quite out of synchrony with the physical world. Successfully getting your body clock back on track begins the moment you wake up. If you start tomorrow, you need to basically get up earlier. That is around the time the sun gets up to have the maximum sunlight exposure early in the morning to hit the eye, to send the signal to the pineal gland to turn melatonin off. Also, to be up and physically active, doing things, drives cortisol up, drives melatonin down, drives body temperature up. All the signals that this is the start of the 24-hour cycle. Then as you move into the evening period, you try to avoid physical activity so that actually cortisol and body temperatures start to go the other way. Darkness comes on, so actually that requires turning the lights out, you know, stopping all the computers, TVs, everything else, to allow melatonin to surge onwards. You'll then go to sleep much more deeply, into deeper phases of sleep, and you'll wake up feeling much more refreshed. As well as adopting what's called good sleep hygiene, such as banishing all media from the bedroom, Amelia was prescribed melatonin. The biological nail on the head, if you like, usually does not have any bad side effects because it's a natural compound. Melatonin and the melatonin-based drugs are the closest things we have to inducing normal sleep. Traditional sleep drugs do not induce sleep. They just induce unconsciousness, right? Which you can do with alcohol or sedatives. You can make people not asleep but unconscious. That's not normal sleep. Consistent and good quality sleep has turned Amelia's life around. I began to get friends back that I'd lost and schoolwork has improved dramatically and it was only at that point that I realised how detrimental my lack of sleep was towards my schoolwork. So my grades went up, school was a place that I was actually happy to be at. 